Welcome to a lesson on how to determine the eigenvectors corresponding to the eigenvalues of a two by two matrix. In the previous lesson, we found the eigenvalues of matrix A to be negative three and positive two. Once we have the eigenvalues of a given matrix, we can find the eigenvectors by solving the eigenvector equation, which is equivalent to either of the equations shown below. We will use this first form where we have the difference of matrix A and lambda times the identity matrix times vector x equals the zero vector, where x is an eigenvector. So setting up the equation, let's let lambda sub one equal negative three. Using our equation, we have matrix A minus negative three times the two by two identity matrix times vector x equals the zero vector. From here, let's write the corresponding matrix equation, where for the coefficient matrix, the first row is negative five plus three times one, which is negative two. And then we have two plus three times zero, which is two. In the second row, we have negative seven plus three times zero, which is negative seven, and four plus three times one, which is seven. The first row of the corresponding augmented matrix is negative two, two, zero, and the second row is negative seven, seven, zero. Writing the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, on the far right, notice how there's no pivot in column two, which means x2 is a free variable. The first row indicates that x1 minus x2 equals zero, and because x2 is a free variable, we have x2 equals x2. Solving the first equation for x1, we have x1 equals x2. We can parameterize the solution by letting x2 equal t. In this case, notice both x1 and x2 are equal to t, and therefore we can say all the eigenvectors x are the vectors in the form of tt, or t times the vector one one, which indicates the eigenvectors are all the scalar multiples of the vector one one, except remember, an eigenvector can't be the zero vector, and therefore t can't equal zero. So because the eigenvectors are in the form of t times the vector one one, we can say that for lambda sub one equals negative three, a basic eigenvector is the vector one one, and let's just check that it does satisfy the eigenvector equation, matrix A times vector x equals lambda times vector x. Looking at the work below, we can see the equation is true for the vector one one because the vector negative three negative three is equal to negative three times the vector one one. If lambda is an eigenvalue of matrix A, then the eigenspace of matrix A corresponding to lambda is a set of all vectors corresponding to lambda. And for the eigenspace, we do include the zero vector. So the eigenspace of matrix A corresponding to lambda equals negative three are all the scalar multiples of the vector one one, or we can say it's equal to the span of the set containing the vector one one. We can also state that a basis for the eigenspace of matrix A corresponding to lambda equals negative three is the vector one one. And now let's consider the second eigenvalue of positive two. Again, we find the corresponding eigenvectors by setting up the equation, the difference of matrix A and the product of lambda and the identity matrix times vector x equals a zero vector, which I've already set up here. And now let's write the corresponding matrix equation, where for the first row of the coefficient matrix, we have negative five minus two times one, which is negative seven. And then we have two minus two times zero, which is two. In the second row, we have negative seven minus two times zero, which is negative seven. And then we have four minus two times one, which is two. Next, we have the augmented matrix. And then we have the augmented matrix written in reduced row echelon form. Once again, notice how x2 is a free variable. The first row indicates x1 minus two sevenths x2 equals zero. x2 is a free variable. Solving the first equation for x1, we have x1 equals two sevenths x2. Again, let's parameterize the solution by letting x2 equal s, where s is any real number, which gives us x1 equals two sevenths s, and x2 equals s, which indicates vector x, which represents all the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals two, are the vectors in the form of two sevenths s, s, or s times the vector two sevenths one. If we want to clear the fraction of two sevenths, we can let r equal seven s, which gives us r times the vector two seven. But once again, we don't include the zero vector as an eigenvector, so whichever form we use, s and r can't equal zero. So using the form where we don't have a fraction, 
we can say that the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub two equals two are all the scalar multiples of the vector two seven except the zero vector. We can also say for lambda sub two equals two, a basic eigenvector is the vector two seven. Checking to make sure it satisfies our eigenvector equation, we can see below it is satisfied because the vector four fourteen equals two times the vector two seven. And then finally, for the eigenspace, we can say the eigenspace of matrix A corresponding to lambda equals two is equal to all the scalar multiples of the vector two seven, or the span of the set containing the vector two seven. And we can also state that a basis for the eigenspace of matrix A corresponding to lambda equals two is the vector two seven. I hope you found this helpful.